If your coolant reservoir tank looks like this, I'll link you to a video from another user where he shows you how to drain, fill, and bleed the coolant for this system. However, if your coolant reservoir tank looks like this, this video will go over the entirety of the process. So I've laid out all the tools here. This is going to be everything that you need to drain, fill, and bleed your coolant. So first off, you're going to need something to lift the car. You could be using ramps. Uh, you could be using your own lift, or in this case, I'm using a floor jack paired with two jack stands to lift the front of the car. And of course, the rear wheels will be chalked off. I've also got a turkey baster here to help suck out fluid. Uh, and you're going to need this 9mm inner diameter tubing. I'll link this in the description as well. You're going to need a spill-proof funnel and some automotive or some form of work gloves. This is help protecting your hands from the heat of the radiator hoses. Uh, you're going to need some cutters as well as some zip ties. This is optional here, of course. What's also optional is you can get some extra clips, whether they be OEM or aftermarket, in case you break some of them on the underbody tray. We've also got some trim tools here to help remove some of the clips from the under tray, uh, as well as a drain pan to catch the coolant, some paper towels, of course, to clean up the mess, and a 10 millimeter socket. So on this ratchet, you're only going to need a 10 millimeter for some four bolts underneath the car. The cooling system does take 5.6 liters or approximately five quarts of coolant. You're going to need two of these bottles of the coolant in order to fill up your system completely. Now, when it comes to the coolant, all you really need is the Toyota Super Long Life coolant. The one in Canada they sell to us is the 5545 premix, but you can get 5050 in other parts of the world. You can also use aftermarket ones as long as it is the pink equivalent. Of course, check with your local auto shops to see if it's correct for your car. Now, I'm just going to be using the Toyota one. This is how much it cost. It's pretty affordable and it's pretty equivalent to the aftermarket ones. First up, we're going to chalk off the rear wheels on both sides of the car and lift up the front end. This is just because we need to get to the front underbody to remove some clips and some bolts. You're going to see here on this image that there is a total of four bolts, all 10 millimeter near the front of the car and then a set of 10 clips, which you're going to need to use your trim tools to remove. Once you've removed that underbody panel, everything is pretty much smooth sailing. This is probably the most difficult part of the process. The, the draining, the filling, the, the bleeding, everything else is easy from here. Before you begin, make sure your car is cool to the touch. The coolant system is pressurized when it is heated up, and you definitely don't want to be opening up your radiator cap and having that coolant spill everywhere and potentially burn you. So please make sure that you do touch the radiator cap. Make sure that your system is cooled before you begin working. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually open up the coolant reservoir tank. It's pretty simple. Just lift up the cap and remove the hose. Make sure you catch any of the fluid that does come out with some paper towels. And we're just going to use our turkey baster here to suck up some of the fluid and bring it in to the drain pan. If you do need to extend uh, your turkey baster to get all the fluid out, what you can do is take your 9mm inner diameter tubing, place it onto your turkey baster, you know, cut, cut up however much you need, uh, and place it onto your turkey baster, and then secure it with a zip tie. And this just functions as an extension, so you can reach all the way to the bottom of the coolant reservoir tank. To begin draining your coolant, twist the radiator cap counterclockwise, dry it off and of course keep it to a side for now, and then we're going to go underneath the car to the coolant petcock. So you're going to see here this white fitting, and it has a little section to the side where you can put your 9mm inner diameter tube to help drain it. So when you twist the, the cap, you don't have to twist it completely off. If you just twist it enough, the coolant will come through this little fitting through the side. You could also just take the cap off completely, but it's up to you. So you're going to see me here twist off the, the petcock, and you can see the fluid starts flowing through the tube attachment that I've put onto the side. Now later, I actually go back and completely take off the fitting because uh, it is a little bit faster to drain the fluid this way. It will take a couple minutes to completely drain all of the coolant out of your system. 
So while that is occurring, please do take note of the upper and lower pool and toeses. So these ones we're going to have to be squeezing during the bleeding process to help burp out some of the air. There's one up here near the intake, which is easy to get to. And make sure you do be careful of not getting your hand or your gloves caught on the radiator fan. But the lower one, unfortunately, is not accessible from the top of the car. So you can actually go underneath the car and you can get it there and squeeze it out to, to help burp air. Now, please do also keep note that this is very close to the radiator fan. So make sure that you're keeping your hands away. And of course, these hoses can get hot during the bleeding process. So make sure that you are wearing some sort of gloves or some sort of protection from the heat. Also, while the coolant continues to drain, we can get the spill-proof funnel ready as well. So get the little fitment that looks similar to your radiator cap. In this kit that I'm linking specifically, it's going to be this blue-looking fitment. And you're going to have to take that little hose piece and make sure that the gasket is facing down. So you'll see me place it like this and then just place it into your coolant cap and twist clockwise in order to tighten it down. It should be a very snug fit, and this is to make sure that nothing leaks out when you do press in your spill-proof funnel. Once your coolant has completed draining, you'll see that it'll stop dripping. If you want to let all the drips come out, that's up to you, but I'm just going to close it up. So take your little petcock and twist clockwise to tighten it. Now, it will tighten and stop completely, so please don't over tighten it. Uh, but once you've closed it up completely, we can now begin by filling the coolant. Now, start by pouring it into your spill proof funnel, and you're going to start seeing some bubbles coming up. Make sure you fill this slowly. You don't want the coolant to overflow. And as well as the as the bubbles are coming out, it may splash up and it may cause a mess. So you know, go slow with this process. You're not in a rush or anything. As you are filling the coolant, you may want to give your upper and lower radiator hoses a squeeze to help burp out some of the air. There's also the hose leading up to the radiator cap that you can also give a little bit of a squeeze to help burp some of the air as well. Make sure to check under your car as well to ensure that there are no leaks and that you have tightened your pet cock completely. If you stop seeing bubbles and no matter how many times you squeeze the upper and lower radiator hoses, if you stop seeing the bubbles moving, then you're good to go on to the next step, which is starting the car. So make sure there's some fluid left over in your spill proof funnel. Make sure this isn't empty whatsoever and go over into your car and start the car. Now, make sure your heater is also on. You can leave the fan speed to low for now. You just need to make sure that the heater is on so the coolant can go through these hoses as well. The process from Toyota is actually pretty simple. For CVTs, make sure your shift lever is set to park. And for the manual cars, just confirm that your parking brake is applied. And then run the engine at 1500 RPM or more for 15 seconds or more. And this is just gonna open up all the valves and help bleed out all of the air. You'll actually see after I've revved the engine that uh, air starts bleeding out here. And this is part of the process to, to get some of the air out. Now, after you've finished that one, you can let your car run for a bit and come up to operating temperature. You can rev your car a little bit if you want to, to help bring it up to operating temperature, but I was uh, in the middle of summer when doing this and it only took about maybe 15 minutes or so. So during this entire process of the car running, make sure you are squeezing your upper and lower radiator hoses. Of course, make sure you're wearing your protective gloves. Be careful of um, keeping your hands away from the radiator fan that it doesn't get caught and all that stuff. Just please be careful while you're doing all of this. Once your car is at operating temperature, this is when your needle is between the hot and the cold. We're going to follow the following cycle for at least seven minutes. You're going to rev your car to 3000 RPM for five seconds and idle for 45 seconds. When you are idling, squeeze the upper and lower radiator hoses several times by hand to bleed out the air and then get back in your car and then rev again for 3000 rpm for five seconds and continue this however many times needed during the process of seven minutes i'll flash the, the calculation on the screen and once you have completed this you should stop seeing air or bubbles coming from your spill proof funnel make sure when your spill proof funnel does get low 
that you are filling it up again, of course, before you continue the bleeding process. If you still see air within the system, just continue the bleed process for further than the seven minutes and continue doing that until you stop seeing air coming out of the system. Now that we are done the coolant bleeding process, shut off your car and get your fluid stopper for your spill proof funnel, which is this little T-shaped thing and press it into the middle of the funnel to prevent any fluid from spilling out. Now you can remove your spill proof funnel as well as the little fitting and you should see that the fluid comes to the top of the reservoir cap. Now, if it's not to the top of the reservoir cap, make sure you add a little bit of fluid before putting on your actual reservoir cap and tightening it back up in a clockwise direction. Now, the last thing we want to do is also fill up our reservoir tank so you can get your spill proof funnel again and whatever fluid you have left, just remove the fluid stopper to let some fluid in and then close it up once you've gotten the correct amount. And of course, I'm going to be filling all the way to the max line on the reservoir tank. I think it's a little bit below the, the max line, unfortunately, but that's still good enough as is. And then of course, close up your reservoir tank. Now I monitored the coolant over the next couple days to make sure that the reservoir didn't get any lower. If it does get lower, of course, to fill more fluid into there, make sure you keep some of the coolant with you. Your last steps is to dispose of the fluid that you've taken out of the car. Now mine does look red, but that's because of the drain pan being black and the fluid has also discolored. So I took this cup to double check the fluid and it is indeed pink. It's just a little discolored. So we're going to take the empty bottle uh, that we've emptied out of our coolant and take our spill proof funnel and just put the remaining coolant into there. And then we're going to take our drain pan. And the great thing about this drain pan is it comes with a little spout to the side so we can use that to pour into our spill proof funnel and therefore into this coolant bottle as well. Now this coolant bottle we're going to dispose of at our local recycling facility, local hazardous disposal facility, or for you that might be a local auto shop, sometimes they take those. Please do check with your municipalities to see how you can dispose of coolant safely. you can now go ahead and reinstall your underbody panel. So I would recommend starting with the clips first because it is a little bit easier and then hand threading in those four bolts too. And if you have broken any of your clips, you know, you can get your aftermarket ones, your OEM Toyota ones that you bought as a spare, or you could just use some zip ties as well to kind of zip tie everything in place. And of course, your last step is to lower your car and of course, remove your wheel chocks as well. Now, I would recommend going for a ride just so you can monitor your coolant temperature to make sure there isn't any spikes that's usually occurring from air bubbles within the system. And of course, monitor your coolant reservoir tank over the next couple days and make sure you don't open your radiator cap unless your car is cool to the touch in case you want to check if there are any air bubbles remaining or if your you know, reservoir tank has gotten a little bit lower or anything like that. I hope it was helpful. Please feel free to leave any questions down below. And as always, all the tools are linked down below in the description as needed. Thank you very much for watching and have yourself a lovely day.